Hi again everyone and welcome and we're working together through a series I've called 66 books 66 short podcasts which take a look at the 66 books of our Bible and today we've reached the book of Philippians the book of living a life worthy of the gospel Philippians over the years has been called a love letter to the church It's also been called an epistle of joy. It really has stood the test of time over the centuries in its ability to bring encouragement in the midst of adverse circumstances to many, many people. For many, the inspiration comes from Paul's ability to illustrate the existing and the eternal compensations and rewards of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 1 identifies Paul and Timothy as the authors, but most acknowledge that Paul alone was the author and Timothy was the one who scribed the words that Paul spoke. Paul, from the beginning and throughout the letter, speaks in the first person, and when he does mention Timothy in chapter 2, it is in the third person. The external evidence for Pauline authorship is found throughout church history, traditions and very early writings. So who were the recipients? Well, at the time of writing this letter, Paul was being held prisoner. We know that from Philippians chapter 1 verse 13. But the letter does not specify the location of his imprisonment. Over the course of his Christian service, Paul was imprisoned many times. We know that from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Though the only places of imprisonment mentioned in the biblical record are Philippi, Jerusalem, Caesarea and Rome. Philippians 1.1 says the letter was written to all the saints in Jesus Christ who are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. Philippi was an important city in the province of Macedonia in the north of Greece. It is one of the select cities that the Romans established as colonies which were centres of Roman life in a non-Roman world. Paul visited the region during his second missionary journey and the church at Philippi was the first church that he established in Europe. We know that from Acts chapter 16. He visited twice during his third missionary journey and seems to have retained a special affection for it. There evidently was a bit of a problem with unity at Philippi. Philippians chapter 1, 2, 3 and 4 makes references to it. And in some sense they were like the church at Galatia, feeling under pressure from Judaizers. They were not only concerned about Paul, but Paul was also concerned about them. The subject of this book is living a life worthy of the gospel, and the message contained in it is an attempt to show how believers should live that life by standing fast in it and also by striving together for it. The first purpose of Philippians is to express Paul's gratitude for their financial support. While there were obviously several reasons why Paul wrote this letter, the immediate purpose was to thank them for their friendship and their money. The Philippian church had sent Aphroditus with money to Rome for Paul, and Paul writes to thank them for the gift, and he does that within this letter. But the second purpose of Philippians is to explain his situation. The Philippians were not just concerned about his financial need, but they were worried about the fact that he was currently in prison. He writes to tell them not to be discouraged because of his imprisonment, for he has had plenty of opportunities to spread the gospel and teach believers. He's also enjoyed good fellowship with the Christians in Rome, and some Christians in the government service were even able to visit him and help care for him. Timothy, he tells him, was also with them. Although execution was always a possibility and he recognises that, he was optimistic that he would be set free and would soon be able to visit the Philippians again. He encourages them by saying the gospel is being spread and he expects to be released. The third purpose of Philippians is to encourage the people he's writing to to live a life worthy of the gospel. They were concerned about him and he was concerned about them also. 
He wants them to live a life worthy of the gospel in a way which means being unified and by having a humble concern for others and by standing fast in the Lord when going through difficult times and very importantly in living in peace with each other. So in summary, Paul wrote to the Philippians to thank them for their gift. He explains the situation and he encourages them to live a life worthy of the gospel, which tells us that believers should always strive to live a life that is worthy of the gospel message that we have received. <laughs>